Everybody uh, stand, please. My name is uh, Bob Kayash. My, my uh, Indian name is uh, Last Man Standing. I'm Ojibwe from Southern Ontario, and it, it's a real honor to be here. I want to, first of all, acknowledge and give our sincere thanks to the, um, to the uh, Muskegon, the um, Squamish, and the um, Slavery Tooth Nations, whose uh, territory we, we're on right now. I ask the Creator to look down upon this gathering and to bring to all of us, bring to our hearts the good feelings that, that are needed to bring together such a, a caring initiative as this housing initiative, and that to keep in mind, Creator, that there are many, many people out there who are suffering and who need our help every day or who need your help every day. So it's with a, it's with a, a, a very sincere heart that I express these words and I, I pray that uh, many good things happen out of this initiative that the people have come together today. Kachimi Gwetchimanito. Thank you, Creator. Um, just before we get started, I would like to introduce um, Sean Gunn to you. He's been part of the head tax redress movement in Chinatown. He's also a writer uh, with the Asian Canadian Writers Workshop, a volunteer of the Powell Street Festival, and he wrote a song, what he calls Boogie, a fight for the downtown east side. And he wrote it a, a year ago to inspire us, downtown east side residents, to speak out against the incentives that Vision Vancouver at City Hall were giving to developers uh, to encourage them to build condos in Chinatown without protections to the low-income community. So, Sean, boogie! Okay, uh, okay I'm just going to song called Boogie the Flight. Hello. Downtown, east side, uptown, west side, inside, outside, your side, my side, his side, her side, everywhere, side, side, get off your backside and take a stand, side, south side, north side, left side is right side, marching downtown, we side by side, downtown, east side, Vancouver. Find your voice to make a choice in the heart of the city, Vancouver. People all groove away their blues. W2TV, Vancouver. Calling you to express your views. Saltwater City, Chinatown, Vancouver. I don't know more, Boogie the Fight. Up to you by Vancouver tonight. So, um, Wendy just kind of gave me marching orders as to what I should talk about. So one is why the downtown east side is precious. And um, Wendy and I did this study, the Community Vision for Change, over two years. Um, we talked to 1,200 downtown east side residents and we came up with what the good things about the downtown east side community are. And you probably all know them, but because a lot of people in this community face discrimination based on race, sexual orientation, gender, disability, addiction, low income, or sometimes a combination of all those things, People have built a very unique community that isn't based on money, where the sense of community and belonging is really strong and people feel accepted and at home. And there's a lot of empathy for people with health and addiction issues and lots of volunteering to make things safer or more fun. And um, necessities are cheap and free and nearby and health and social services are close which is huge when you don't have money for a bus fare. So also people in this community, more than other communities, work for justice. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more. So no other neighborhood in Vancouver has all these things. And it's what my late partner, Sandy Cameron, called the soul of Vancouver. So it's, it's worth preserving the good things, which isn't to say that everything about the downtown east side is good, but these are the good things that we do wanna uh, reproduce. 
So then Wendy said, well, tell them about the displacement facts. So I want to start with a question. Who said it's a fundamental principle that there will be no displacement of downtown east side residents? Was it the radical redhead? <laughs> was it homeless Dave? It was homeless Dave. Was it <laughs> Ivan the Terrible? Ivan the Great? Who said that? It was a fundamental principle not to have any displacement. Who? Who? We're dying to know. It's, Who said that? it's official city policy adopted unanimously in 2005. No. So CAP does a hotel report every year, and we go to each hotel posing as a po possible tenant, and we get information about rents. And this year we got information from the hotels with 87% of the rooms. Not all of them, but most of them. And this year we found that we lost 426 privately owned rooms to rents above 425. 426 rooms no longer affordable to people on welfare in one year. We also found hotels that were consciously, deliberately excluding people on welfare as tenants. That's where we got the title of the report. We're trying to get rid of the welfare people. That's what a desk clerk told Ivan at the Metropole. We're trying to get rid of the welfare people. So now, look at the map. See the yellow hotels. Those are the only ones we found that are where all the rooms rent for 375 or less. And the red ones with an X are over 500. And the red ones are over 425. Anyway, you can look at the hotels around Woodwards. And this is a, in our report too, it's pretty interesting. In 2005, they all rented to low-income people. By 2012, three years after Woodwards came in, we had lost 404 units for low-income people to high rents or closures. And those high rents are all over 500. And we only gained 125 at Woodward, so we lost a total of 279 units for low-income people because of the gentrification, the pressure that condos put on land values and taxes and rents and store rents. So then the other thing Wendy asked me to talk about was how the city lowballs the loss and highballs the new housing that's coming. So at CAP, we want the 500,000 SROs replaced with good self-contained social housing with a bathroom and a kitchen. And we also want the 850 homeless people that are in the downtown east side to have self-contained homes. We don't want them to have to stay in shelters. The city and province kind of count, make it seem like everything good is happening towards this end. And the way they do this is that the city counts SROs that the province bought as new social housing, even though it's not new and it's not self-contained. And the city also counts social, all social housing as low-income housing stock. I have this uh, printout from a slide that the city gave. They have these two bars and they gave it to city council when they were congratulating themselves as doing so much about housing. And I don't know if you can see from here, but this last bar is supposed to show that the low income housing stock in the downtown east side is all hunky dory and everybody has enough housing. Well, the problem is with this bar that the blue on the bottom, which is supposed to be low income housing, some of the housing in there rents for nine seventy-five a month. That's at the Burns Block. Some of it rents for seven hundred at the Columbia and the Metropole. Some of it rents for eight hundred at the Golden Crown. There's at least two thousand units in there. The low-income people can't afford, but the city is telling everybody with this slide that that's low-income housing. So highballing the high. So you've probably heard on the radio about, or, or in the paper or whatever, TV, about all the new housing we're getting, right? A city says hundreds of new social housing units are coming, and we do have 405 coming, mostly at the Marie Gomez 
and the drake over the next couple of years four hundred five in two years that's about two hundred a year it used to be back in the eighty's we got almost eight hundred a year every year on average in vancouver we fought for all the, that housing at the marie gomez and the drake now the city and the province also talk about the renovations of the hotels that the province got as though they were new units, even though they were full when the province bought them. And did you know, here's something, that over a third of the new social housing units that the city is planning are gonna be renting at above welfare rate? And more importantly, the city and the province don't, don't say that there is no government program to fund social housing after 2015. There's nothing. There is no new government funded social housing planned after that. It's a, it's a crisis. And the city talks constantly about how great they are at ending street homelessness. But that just means cramming people into shelters like First United. And we have 850 people that are languishing in shelters and need housing. So okay, we have 405 units coming over the next two years. But we have 850 homeless people. We just lost 426 rooms last year. If we lose 426 this year, that will be double the new housing that's coming in the next two years. Anyway, it's a crisis, right? It's a crisis, it's not a good news story. So why should we fight now? Okay, the developers in the city are trying to tell us that we should accept all this condo development and rely on developers for housing. They call this partnerships. So here's what a partnership looks like. In Chinatown, we're getting 561 condos and 11 units of welfare rate social housing. At 955 East Hastings, we're getting 282 condos and 24 units of welfare rate social housing. So with these two developments as examples, for every one unit of welfare rate housing, we get 24 condos. Okay, so I got out my calculator, right? In order to just house 850 homeless people, we need to have 20,000 more condos in the downtown east side. So can the good things about our low-income community survive if we rely on developers and get all those condos? I think it's clear that unless a break is put on gentrification, the privately owned hotels will be wiped out as low-income low housing and the people in them forced elsewhere and the stores and the services that the low-income community needs will be wiped out too as they have been in the area around Woodwards and Gastown. So this is something Wendy didn't ask me to ask, but the question is, are we asking for the moon? Yeah. Are we being horrible radicals here? Okay, so the city says that by 2041, the population of the downtown east side is gonna be 25 to 41,000. It's 18,000 now and 12,000 of us are low income. So we're not asking here for additional low-income housing. We're asking for homeless people to be housed and we're asking for the SROs to be replaced, right? Not additional, replaced. So that people who live here now can continue to live in the community but have better housing. So even if we get that the, and the condo prop population keeps going up, the low-income community will be in a real minority. So right now the local area plan is happening. The city could say that we had a, that we'll have a social justice zone in parts of the downtown east side, so I need my heart. 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 Did Tammy leave with the heart? Oh, there it is. <laughs> so this is Karen Ward's heart. Have you ever heard of a heart that's about zoning? <laughs> so we're thinking we need to use zoning not to get housing, but to stop gentrification so the city will have time to buy land and lobby the, and us to lobby the other levels of government to fund social housing. So there's three areas of the downtown east side that haven't got recent zoning. 
And one of them is the Oppenheimer area. That should be 100% social housing yes. for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Then there is the Hastings <laughs> Corridor in Thornton Park. Yes. We're thinking that should be about 70% social housing. And then there's the rest of the city and the downtown east side. That should be about 30% social housing. And that would help stave off the gentrification, at least until we got the social housing that we need. Without government, some people think we're, we can't rely on government, but we've really got to push on government, and that's the social housing now banner with the provincial election coming up. We've got to push like hell to get social housing. If we don't have social housing built, we'll never end homelessness. It's a never-ending struggle, but when you see a friend that gets into social housing, you see it's worth it. And I just wanted to say we have a neighborhood history of fighting and actually winning, so now is the time to keep fighting for the neighborhood. We won the Carnegie Center as a community center. We won Crab Park. We won Insight. We finally got the cops to look for the murderer of the missing women. And back in the 30s, this building was occupied and it was the beginning of a movement for the eight hour day in unemployment insurance. So this is a community that does fight, that does have victories, and we can have them again, especially if we stay united. Oh, thank you, Jean. All right, so we're moving on to uh, Sid Chow Tan, founding chairman of the Head Tax Family of Society, uh, and he was recently quoted as sticking it where the sun don't shine. Uh, Sid has also fought against Vision Vancouver's plan to give incentives to property owners in Chinatown to build condos and renovate their properties without protection for the low-income seniors and residents. It's my pleasure to introduce Sid Tan. Thank you, Tammy, and thank you all for being here. I, I look around and uh, I can only say, boy, you folks look so beautiful. What a bunch of beautiful people here. People that care enough to come out on a Sunday afternoon to deal with the issues that we have to deal with. Essentially greed, essentially greed. So I, I don't really have much to say. I just want to tell you that when we started the redress in 1983, I can say that justice is not an issue of popularity. So I would just like to give you my support. Continue what you're doing with Pigeon because you know you don't really care. You should not care about the popularity because you're doing the right thing. And that's what I think. All great leaders are love, hate, and fear. <laughs> also, uh, when when you look at what we did, when we started in 2005 in the redress, there was not a single organization in Chinatown that would give us a place to meet. Not one, but the one just right over here, and I find it interesting, the family association closest to the Carnegie Center was the one that gave us a place. And they're still the only one. <laughs> we have to pay for the rest. <laughs> So I, I don't really have much to say except I, I, you know, I see the struggle down here. Um, I, I've been involved in the downtown east side since the early 80s and, and what I've seen in here, you know, with the people, you know, after all, the downtown east side is the people. And it's the people that are important. And I, I just want to say I support you. Not only that, I am tremendously inspired by what you folks have done over the years. So I, I, uh, I'm basically a media person and a cheerleader, so if, if, if you don't mind, I want to lead you in a cheer. And uh, I'm going to say, when I say people, you say power. People. Power. People. Power. People. Power. When I say condos, you say hell no. Condos. Hell no. Condos. Hell no. Condos. Hell no. When I say justice, you say now. Justice. Now. Justice. Now. Justice. Now. Thank you very much and keep up the fight. All right, if you, if you weren't awake, you are now. 